To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep no more, and by sleep to say we end the heartache and the natural shocks that flesh is heir to? Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come, come, come. Welcome to the Quackcast. This is Quackcast number 332. I'm Ozone Ocean, and with me is Mr. Baines and Miss Pitface. I don't like those titles, Miss Baines, because it, it separates you guys. You were so trying. Categories. Yeah. 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 Fair. yeah. Say, so my oh, are you one of those people who don't believe gender exists? One of those dudes? Yeah, of course. Damn it. <laughs> okay. Artificial binary. <laughs> something or other it's not no no it's 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 not fair it's it's uh because you guys define what you want your titles to be so i'll just say pitface and banes are with me <laughs> i shouldn't impose my artificial <laughs> structures on you guys stop being what? the patriarchy <laughs> <ass. Exactly. laughs> everything that's wrong in the world it's all me oh my god <laughs> cut off my dick and throw me in the ocean <laughs> Insane. You know, it's a, I think it'll right be okay. Right. You know, you're being too hard on yourself. I'd be okay because just I'm, take I'm, a leather I'm, strap and slap my awesome. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like fun. <laughs> right, so we're we're going to be chatting about immortality in this uh, particular stupid cast, and um, because it, it's a trope that's in in fiction all the time, and it, it's a fun question because um, you always have to say, okay, this character's immortal, but why is that bad? What's wrong with immortality? And then you have to come up with reasons why it's it's bad. So, because that's what you do, you always make things so they're not perfect, or else. I always think it's of it's always the, the bad guys who want immortality. What's, Sorry, what was that? Always the bad guys who want it. Said so it's always the bad guys who want immortality. That's true. That's the two things I always think of are, are the Doctor Who one. Okay. Where it's the bad guy seeking immortality, and he's gone through all these, you know, like searched for it and searched for it and everything, and he, they finally come to this powerful being who can grant <laughs> immortality, you know, and, he, and it's, he's like, "You wish to live forever," and he's like, "Yes, <laughs> yes," and the guy disappears, and he like, there are these like little stone um, sculptures below this being's throne or or whatever in this room. And uh, these little stone structures have eyes that, like, just look back and forth. <laughs> and, like, suddenly there's a new one, and this bad guy, like, he's in this stone thing, and his eyes just, like, looking back and forth. Oh, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> then there's a, a Twilight Zone. It was in the Twilight Zone novel, or one of the novels, anthology, I read as a kid, where a guy gets um, granted eternal life. Nothing can kill him. And um, sort of drunk with 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 power and anger, he kills his wife, who he hates, and uh, he ends up. He has a great lawyer who gets him life in prison. <laughs> so that was kind of one of those Twilight Zone sort of joke. You know, that's the punchline. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, kind of a reminder that having immortality isn't the same as being all powerful. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's always a downside, man. <laughs> yeah. Remember, you got two more wishes, guys. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> All right. Before we get into that, we've got to do introduce the featured comic. And the featured comic this week was this marvelous little comic called The Cherub Brothers. And I didn't do the featured comic. Kwai didn't do it. Gene Joke didn't. Do it. I did it. Yes. Well, who did? Oh, I did it. It was hijacked. It was pitched. I did a thing. I am now forever immortalized in the annals of drunk duckdom. 
contributor of, of, of this fine community. I now give life instead of continually suck it away. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. If, if, it feels kind of powerful making, I'm sorry, I just say it feels kind of powerful making features. Like, I was going through comics and it was just like, who shall I make? the lucky one and then like i go back and see like after we like features are made and like nobody notices anymore (laughs) (laughs) but it felt it felt really powerful though like i choose you lucky mortal come ascend (laughs) you're athena you're granting a place in the stars making uh, making making careers making lives who lives and who dies breaking Lift. All right, <laughs> all right. So, am I? Uh, I'll I'll give a spiel now. <laughs> so, Cherub Brothers is a comic by McGore, and it's rated teen. Um, so, the Cherub Brothers is a panel a day comic about two supposed angels, Soon and Zell, uh, told from the perspective of Corey, an everyday kid who observes the kind of things the brothers do for others, uh, despite their so-called quirks. Corey's perspective as he talks to his friends gives the insight an urban legend gives the, uh, I'm reading my own words, they don't make sense, gives the insight an urban legend-like tone. The art is scratchy, energetic, and spontaneous, and fits the freestyle-like feel of the comic. McGurr trades regiment-like paneling for a freedom of uh, for freedom to compose the comic content as he or she wishes, because I'm not sure. Uh, if you're looking for something you really haven't seen yet, check out the Cherub Brothers, where the cryptic meets slice of life. Yeah, cool. Meets slice. And there's some awesome art. It's really, like you say, really scratchy. And it's really cool. Yeah, it's cool looking. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, there's, yeah. Uh, it's not belabored. The way, say, my art is, or something like that. There's more uh, life in it, which makes it a lot more interesting. <laughs> so. Definitely has a pit face kind of style ish, just in an overall <laughs> style kind of way. You know, it has that energy to it, and that kind of roughness. You just like to scribble it. on a page and while you yeah. scream and swear and cry and eventually <laughs> get bored. <laughs> Watch the Andy Griffith show. Um, exactly. That's where you go is. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Those are insights. Uh, I mean, it's interesting. Yeah, see? See? You learn something every day. Um, but it's it's interesting to see, like, the difference. Like, that's one of the things that I liked when I was looking at these different comics is that you can almost picture the the demeanor the person has as they draw them. Like, some people will sit there and, like, you could just see, like, everything has to be, like as perfect as they can make it, like, you know, studiously drawing, like, figures and building them up and then, like, trying to, for every beam of light is, like, down to the perspective is, you know, down to a mathematical other guys, like McGurr, who's, it's it's interesting because it's, Super, like, I just imagine him just sitting down and just, like, just, like, all right, there's going to be a guy over here, and then this shit's going to happen over here, and then, like, making it as he goes along. But still, it's not to the point where it looks like it's without talent, and that's the thing that I found interesting. Like, he, he's, like, in this really cool liminal phase state, I think, where, like, he has talent, he knows how to make a human form and stuff, but he, it's the point now where he can have fun with it instead of just like getting stuck in the layout and regiment of trying to make sure these things, things that might not even matter look perfect. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly. so maybe I'm wrong. Like he can I twist things like and it. exaggerate things. Yeah, I know totally what you mean. I agree. Yeah. It doesn't I look agree. wrong yeah. though. You know? he's, yeah. He's not mentally caught yeah. up in, in a prison of his own mind, which yeah. When we comicers get caught in. I know I am. I still haven't escaped. <laughs> I will say, though, making comics with uh, with no talent is very liberating. 
<laughs> so there's very little pressure and uh, it can be very nice. Uh, I like that. <laughs> no, I like it seriously when people who don't know what the fuck they're doing try and do it because yeah. then you get like different new We're not talking about things, you know what I mean? Like uh, Magor here. This is Baines was making a self depreciating Yeah. Comment, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But up. still though. I still, mean Still, yeah. I like it. it yeah, there's there's a lot of freedom in that kind of way of doing things. All right, so next up we have the featured music that Gumballus has given us for this week, and it is a um, a comic that we've uh, was actually featured a while ago by Gene Joke. His fantastic return to doing features uh, in May after his uh, very long break. So the comic was The Beard, I think it's called. The Beard. This creepy, creepy kind of thing. So how how did I describe that? Okay. It's a beard. This is one. Oh, I like that comic. Yeah? Yeah, it is cool. It looks I just realized I knew what you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, going on. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is one creepy, magical kind of music. It's, it's creepy and it's magical. Um just the type of music you'd associate with the alien hair follicles. It brings to mind strange activity on the microscopic level inside the skin. Very unsettling. So, take it away, Mr. Gun Wallace. Whoa. the music by Gamalas. Thank you for that, you creepster. It was uh, lovely. Or not. <laughs> no, no, no. It was really good. It really uh, was evocative of the, the comic. So, immortality, guys. Well, immortality in comics or in fiction, movies, whatever. That's what we're going to be talking about. It's always a poison chalice most of the time. Some people tackle yeah. it, and they, they do, like, explore it and give the, give a character immortality and make it sort of more interesting. But I think the common way of doing immortality is to say, yeah, you can be immortal, but you're going to turn into a skeleton and it'll all going to be crap. Or, <laughs> everyone's going to die, and it's just going to be super sad all your life, and it's just going to be tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. <laughs> so they, they do that kind of thing. Or, you know, get turned into a Doctor Who rock. <laughs> yes, turn into a statue. It's pretty terrifying. Yeah. You can be a model, but you have to spend your whole life at the mar- bottom of the Marianas Trench. <laughs> you can never... See, that, that stuff like that is enough for me to never wish for immortality. Instantly, I'm like, why would anybody ever wish for that? <laughs> I think you'd get used to it, though. Like, yeah, being at sure. the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Like, just constantly drowning. <laughs> yeah. 
That's, that's pretty scary. Well, if you've got eternity down there, you sort of you you'd sort of filter out the drowning parts in your life and you'd stitch together all the waking parts and then then it'd just be like breathing for you. It's like <gasps> Uh, I'm dead. I'm alive. So that that's that's your breathing pattern because a lot of time would slow down, and I don't know where I'm going with this, but uh, it makes sense. <laughs> I don't you know, have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> it's like your rhythm of of your life would sort of um, speed up or slow down. To it, it, trust me, it makes a hell of a lot of sense. <laughs> it's like the day. The day-night cycle is like a blink to you. So the dying cycle would be not such a significant thing. It could be. It could change. It... That's what Maybe I... the I evolving mean... gills. Yeah. If you live that long. Well. Yeah. <laughs> it would take a damn long yeah. time. Well, one, my basic premise is the way I sort of came up with this whole idea was that um, humans, obviously, we die. <laughs> We, we can live like 70, 70 years, we can live 120, and that's that's like the theoretical maximum anyone can ever live. And then we always die, and that always happens. So when we come up with like uh, immortality in stories, there has to be a bad side to it, or else... Ah! Uh, 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 maybe not. No. Or else... <laughs> we'd, not necessarily. We'd, uh, because none of us can be immortal. So you always have to make it um, mm. like a negative thing. Like it can't be something that you are... Uh, Almost to. a greedy Impossible. thing. What's that? Almost a greedy thing a lot yeah. of the time. It's portrayed as a... Although I can think of... I can think of a counterexample to that and what I had said before about bad guys always wanting it. <laughs> um uh, although we never really see what happens. Well, I don't remember what had come of it of the uh, in the uh, fourth Indiana Jones movie. But if you remember the last crusade yeah. um, and there there's the the chalice, you know, uh, in the last supper and a uh, spoiler alert. Uh, um, it's the fountain of youth kind of kind of thing, like the Holy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the Holy Grail. it was the Holy Grail. <laughs> yeah, it's the Holy Grail. Basically, um so, you know, obviously, blah, 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 you drink the wrong one, you die, bad shit happens to you. But if you drink the right one, you know, like you're saying, you get uh, eternal youth, and then sometimes we can go on to say that that's also eternal life. Um, but anyway, so Indy was trying to get it at that point. At first, he was just kind of going along because his father, you know, he's trying to find his father and stuff. But then when he tries to actually go and get it, his father is uh, uh, fatally injured. And if he doesn't get it, um, his dad's going to die. And so that's his reason for getting it. And so in the movie, and he gets it, and he his father actually drinks of it, and it restores him. Now, we don't, we don't see what happens after that. Like I said, I don't remember what happened in the fourth movie. And I think by this time, the series had more or less kind of come to an end. Yeah. And so I think that's one example of like as vague as it is that's you know you imagine that now his father will be immortal or at least you know have eternal youth and we never see that there's any negative consequence to that well i remember that and indy drinks it too if you remember to test it oh did he so to make sure he has the the right right. cup you know um and i remember saying the same thing when i saw that movie i'm like okay wait now indy is immortal and so is his so is his father. And uh, there's actually just a tiny little reference. My friends had to tell me this where it says like you, you can't, it's the price of immortality that you have to stay within the seal. There's a yeah. seal on the floor. So if you pass out of it, you, uh, you lose that magic, you know, uh, you, become, you become the guardian of the new, of the growl, the new guardian. And that's the, the price. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you stay that's here, great. just stay here forever and watch all these cups. And you can live forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> poor knight, dude. Yeah, I felt bad for that. The poor guy. Like, his story leading up to it, too. Like, his brothers died and shit. He was the last one left. He just gets stuck babysitting this cop, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's tired. Like, he makes one tired swing at Indy, and he's like, oh, you beat me. Yeah. Here you go. 
<laughs> no, you, you take I over. I love that character, dude. Yeah. I f- oh, like he's not in it for very long, but that's yeah. he's almost an iconic character in a way. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about, but yeah, I think there, but, there's yes. always a price to immortality. Yes, yes, there it is. If, if it's a story it's about immortality, I mean, you have ageless characters in stories. Yeah, mm. you, yeah. you know, sort of do, and we don't really. Um, you're right. If the story is about immortality, then there's a price. And if it's if it's not about it, well, then do I don't feel like it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Like, so there's gods. There's um, vampires. Vampires. Well, they they there's an implicit price to being a vampire because you have to go absolutely. And yeah, yeah. And they talk about how, and that's kind of immortality with an asterisk too. Like, there's still something that could technically kill you, but you will not die a natural death. Yeah, yeah. See that kind of immortality, not the vampire, but I mean, if if someone was saying like, you keep your health, you keep your vigor, you keep your, I'll say youth, although mine's already gone. But if I got the offer now, to sort of say <laughs> be somewhere in the middle, you know, and like you you won't. Um, decay anymore but you can still you you can still die but you won't uh, age i don't know i'd ponder i'd ponder that offer hmm. <laughs> yeah just think about it you know what i mean yeah, think like, about it yeah <laughs> like you might still get hit by a bus but you know you're not gonna <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know you're not gonna i don't know yeah, dead yeah. yeah. <laughs> well okay so there's, um, I think we we talked about it in this this thread that we we've got here. Um, so we don't have to read any of the posts because uh, you know, it becomes discussion. But one of the reasons that people cite, and Pitt, you talk about it and I talk about it as well, is the fact that um, say so if you believe in an afterlife, then immortality doesn't become so important. It, it then actually it's a good immortality point. becomes a rival. So. If you live in a culture that is strongly based on having an afterlife, the notion of immortality becomes almost um, uh, heretical. It becomes almost an evil kind of thing because then you're you're competing against um, this this thing that's meant to be the final reward. You're meant to be going ascending, and that's just not Christianity. That's Judaism. That's uh, Islam. Yeah, that's it's Buddhism. It's in tons of. Because death is and has been an intrinsic part of life. It is one of the things that we, maybe the ultimate thing that we all have in common, not to start waxing philosophical here or anything, but I guess it kind of will go that way in this quest, but like (laughs) quest in this cast. That's cool. I like quest. I think we should have that in the title. (laughs) Um. Oh, I forgot my point now. God damn it! Death is intrinsic, really? so we all we we all have it in in um. It's common to all humanity. It's become part of culture. Oh, yeah, which is why it is in so many cultures. Not necessarily as a reward, but just as part of this is your natural, almost not duty. I guess it would be considered a duty if there was a possibility to become immortal. But like this is the natural order this is your natural progression and not following this progression is almost like a disgusting mutation of natural order and i think that's what a lot of the to use the term loosely religious and i use it as a broadest term possible thoughts follow yeah 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 Yeah. it's it's like a, a perversion I think that's the way they'd look at it. You, it's Version, like, you yeah. Deal with the devil, yeah. um, that kind of thing. Or, or it's just you're cheating yourself out of. I mean, when you said the na- the natural order. I mean, whatever ends up happening after we die, whatever that is or isn't, you know, we none of us know really. But like, you you won't get to do that thing or see that yeah, that's kind of where my know. head goes you know yeah it's like well yeah so I think mine you know, too you actually get reincarnated you don't get to be part of the the, the work towards the big uh, universal spirit or whatever it is in hinduism or buddhism that's the same kind of thing if buddhism is mm-hmm. like a, 
Buddhism is like the Christianity version of um of Judaism. Yeah. <laughs> so Buddhism is, is, is that to Hinduism as Judaism is is, is Christianity is to, to Judaism. So yeah, they sort of make it a bit more friendly and kinder and lovey dovey. So yeah, you, you get reincarnated and then you become part of this big universal spirit or something like that. Well, Over even again. outside of reincarnation and stuff, like, I mean, for me, because when you had asked this question, and since we didn't really say it, the question you had asked is that, that is part of the forum post that we we're talking about is you had asked why people would reject immortality. And, and um, yeah, I just did totally smell my armpit. Um <laughs> I realize that the camera's on. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, and um, smell like a damn rose. Say, I'll tell you that, <laughs> like a fart blossom. But thank you. The um, uh, reason why I myself had kind of elected, like in this in this hypothetical question, uh, to say that I wouldn't want immortality is. For me personally, um, I'm very curious about what does come after this. You know what I mean? And like, like I would love to spend eternity, you know, like floating around space and like, you know, being blown up in quasars and shit like that, and like all uh, all sorts of shit. But um, you know, just to be able to like through, like it'll it'll hurt possibly but then like you know you live through it and then you're like yeah that was fun let's go do it again hey i I think i see a black hole over there you know that kind of stuff but like at the same time like you have to wonder um will i be able to do shit like that anyways if after i die like if you believe in a spiritual afterlife or like like i guess the point i'm getting to is you can't know what happens after death from the perspective of the living. And that's like, I'm just curious. So that was like a whole personal tangent and I didn't need to go off on that. But since we were talking about that post um, and now, now if if I want to relate it back to comics and stuff like that, which I'm going to try to do in this very shaky, dumb way. (laughs) Yeah. Cause you, when you see people go for immortality in comics, it's never really for, an explicit reason like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's always kind of dumbed down. Like, if I'm immortal, then I can go and, like, cause as much chaos as possible! <laughs> Something <laughs> like that, you know? Maybe it isn't a yeah. bad reason, but... Like... <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is often sort of dumbed down to... It's superhero comics anyway, but, yeah, they, they do sort of follow that path. But they... They do have the the poison chalice effect as well in um, in comics. So think of some immortal characters. Wolverine, because he heals all the time, so he's become yeah. immortal in a way. But mm. he has to. He has all these tragedies. He's always in wars and stuff like that. And he's seeing people die all the time, and he he feels all the you know he can he can survive injuries, but it always hurts hurts him a lot. And um, yeah. Deadpool as well can come back from horrific injuries, but he looks like crap because <laughs> he's got cancer all over his beautiful, once beautiful face. So we have, I mean, that's probably not done very well. They are the bad side of immortality <laughs> because I don't think you'd mind that you looked crap after all, would you? If you could, if you had those sort of powers, you'd sort of think, who cares? <laughs> And if you had forever too, I mean, you if it, if it really bothered you, you could probably really fix it somehow. Exactly. Like if you lived forever, like then you have a long time to fix that shit if you don't like it. Precisely. So yeah, my my question was in the, in the forums. It was like, um, why? What is what is really wrong with immortality? What is really? Because a lot of the reasons are bullshit. That people have come up with, but it's interesting to look at at, at the, the bullshit. You just say it's bullshit because you were so advocating, like the, like I would totally choose immortality. Of course, yeah, yeah. No, but they are. I mean, because the reasons we come up with um, are because you have to have bad reasons to have immortality. If if immortality is part of the story, then you have to have the bad side to it because that's how it is. You know, culturally. You know, like I was saying before about, you know, the heaven and the afterlife and all that kind of thing. The culture is inbuilt into us that we, we 
immortality is not something that is is good for a character to have whereas if a character does have immortality then there's something evil or or weird about them when they do so um what are some of the typical things so there's um uh there's there's the like the twilight zone kind of thing you know oh you end up like a rock or you end up down the bottom of the ocean there's the um or internal boredom if you live forever then you become oh my god another day another century oh i remember when it was full of life and vigor and now it just seems like life has has no spark left everything is gray you know there's that (laughs) (laughs) i like that character you're doing who has that that (laughs) (laughs) maybe i'll read someone's post in that kind of way Oh, oh, life! Oh, oh, <laughs> damn it, Bobby! Uh, the Dorian Gray kind of character, um, right? He's experienced everything to the the max, and it, it does not have its spark anymore. Um, there's the uh, oh yeah, the everything dies. I'm so sad. Oh, the tragedy! I'll, I'll live to see my children and their children die. And oh my god, it's such a Oz hates children, so he's totally fine with this. Yeah, kill them all. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, you, your pitiful little family, be gone. <laughs> this overpopulation idea. Careful, Oz, yeah. that's how you end up a statue. A yeah, living statue. <laughs> it's overpopulation, so if we all become immortal, then we just keep on having babies and they'll live forever. And Oh my god, there's nowhere else for us to go. We're just like overpopulated people all over the place um although of course i mean when you think of everyone being immortal yeah i've had that thought too like if everyone was immortal then you have like kind of the rich and powerful have a stranglehold on things even to a level beyond what they do now you know yeah there's that. just thinking in terms of writing a story or just in terms of whatever real world effects like you'd have that kind of nightmarish thing like where those powerful people are just more and more powerful yeah, they just like kind of cement their uh, hold on everything it's true they, they they become entrenched we could look at the um for an example of that not immortality obviously because no one's ever achieved that but we can look at uh, the the inheritance laws why they were introduced say in in england yeah. what happened was they had to introduce laws that when um uh, people died you know they had to pay enormous taxes on their inheritance because unfortunately what had happened is that a few families had just gone and bought up more and more things and when people die they pass it on to their children and they keep on buying more and more things so it, all the wealth was you know, concentrated but, into the hands of these few people yeah exactly yeah practically a zero inheritance tax and others you know talk of that now too right so it meant that yeah. but you can't have the entire fortune just going to the to the kids and kind of not being taxed properly, yeah. or you do end up with this class system. Gradually, one family just owns everything. Exactly, yeah. But, like monopoly, but yeah. So there's that. But the thing is, like for the overpopulation idea, obviously, when you look at animals that live longer, they have less babies. So there's like an inbuilt kind of fix to those things. So if you were immortal, probably you'd become sterile. So, you know, it's... Uh, Dude, you, you hope. <laughs> you, you become extra potent. So just, I become immortal and 20 years later... <laughs> just, like, just like, you you shoot it in the air and like the cloud becomes pregnant. Like... <laughs> <laughs> brains, ozone ocean clones from the sky. So, That's what kind of god I would be. Just like, <laughs> all right, you want the immortality thing, man? Here you go. Have fun. No. <laughs> a thousand years ago, that planet god. is populated by pit face everywhere. <laughs> pit face, just, there is no more planet left, and it's just a ball of babies that floats <laughs> through oh, space. Oh, wow. <laughs> the Earth is a black hole. Yeah, it just. Shoom. Reaches critical mass of pit face baby. <laughs> Collapsing <laughs> under the mass of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. So there's that idea. What else is the the uh, the downsides of immortality that we have come, the fictional downsides? Um, so, yeah, the vampiric one. 
So you can live forever, but you have to suck blood and you have to have a deal with the devil and you have to be despised by everyone. And there's that. There's yeah, you live outside of. Yeah, you can't relate to to, to reality and people anymore. You're always... yeah. That's if it's just you. You can only listen to like '80s post punk <laughs> all the time. <laughs> That's right. Like culturally, you're frozen, but to an extreme degree. Yeah, yeah. You can't so like... an old guy walking around. Like you're, you're young. You look young, but you're still walking around with your trousers pulled up to your uh, nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Complaining about <laughs> the new generations. Yeah, that that'd actually be a really good story. I like that one. That's a different take on the whole thing. So you're stuck in that period. <laughs> That's more interesting than than the, some of the. The bad sides people come up with. Does that? Um, oh yeah, there's the the. If you live forever, but you know, you can. You like you can still die of disease or something like that. So you have to live in a bubble <coughs> oh, your me. whole life. Yeah. So yeah. A sterile environment. Yeah. Like that one. That's really awful and sad. Like oh, forever scared that something's gonna touch me. Oh, like Howard Hughes or whatever. Extra long fingernails and. Creepy old person, or you you decay, so you then you become like an ever living skeleton. And that'd be badass, dude. I'd love to be like an immortal <laughs> skeleton walking around. I would love that. And I watch, and then like like I saw this stuff. I was actually thinking of this. Like I saw this stuff that supposed. I forgot what it's called. It's like pink, and it makes everything really, really, really durable. So I would just like wait till I was bones, and then I would dip all my bones in that stuff, and then never decay. <laughs> oh, that's ah, so when everyone idea. else is turning into dust, floating on the wind, going, "Oh God, I wish I still had a body. Damn it, why didn't I die? Oh, I can't. I need just to be kill strolling myself. down the street, whistling, being like, you have gotten that pink durable stuff. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fine. I'm good. Walk down the street and get some milk. <laughs> Clacky skeleton." Yeah, like we've been seeing this, <laughs> the singing skeleton for years walking by. She just keeps rubbing it in. Buying she never it. gets tired of it. <laughs> she just keeps buying that. it up too. Just pouring it down her skull face and having it spiral yeah. after <laughs> I don't even like them. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you pink skeleton lady. <laughs> <laughs> So the other one I think Bravo mentioned is you become so bored with life, you can't kill yourself and try and throw yourself in volcanoes and you don't die and think, oh, God, it can't just kill me. Oh, it's not fair. Sun blows, you dive into a sun, it blows up. Oh, I can't die. I'm just going to suffer to the end of the universe. See, Go on. Stuff like this. I, I kind of take take your side more on this kind of point, Oz, because as much as that would suck, like when you have forever, you'll go through cycles of thinking, I think. And so it, I don't think that you would feel that way forever. Maybe at first, like once if things do start to feel like they're they're waning and like or, you know, you do feel sad for the loved ones you lose and stuff. Like at first it's gonna really fucking suck when it gets to that point. But then you find how your mind will change afterwards. And I think that's the one thing in this argument that we can't really put our finger on is when like you when you're in like the thick of immortality, which implies that there's a beginning and an end, which there wouldn't be an end, obviously. But when you're in the thick of immortality, I think that's the thing we can't relate to is how would your mind work? I think it, yeah. we, we just don't know. We don't know, you know? Yeah. You start to see the things that everyone gets so excited about, and then it ends up being nothing. I mean, you, if you live a few years, you even start to get a taste of that, you know? Like, I'm um, at that point already. Bugger it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I feel that. So, I, like, I'm, I'm just imagining that, like magnified by a hundred or a thousand or whatever you know like, you like like what if you just sorry go ahead sorry um there was like a lay i wasn't sure if you were still talking um but like yeah so like what if what happens is like you become extremely different morally like you know like like People who, like, watch way too much porn and then watch way too much weird porn. And, like, like because after a while, then, like, the weird stuff, like, loses its its effect. And so you have to find something else. And then, like, 
Like, I've been doing that kind of shit forever, not just with porn, obviously, but, like, with different walks of life. Like, so, one, your your appreciation for life is probably going down. Your, I mean, just like your, you know, yeah, it's a rare cosmic gem type of thing. It's You don't have that anymore, let's say, after a while. And then the other things, you have to start getting thrills from more and more and more um, sources, you know. <laughs> yeah. And maybe not always from freaky shit, but, like, you know, like, it, things might progress along that way. So, like, I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of trying to really try and put myself in, like, where, how would you be thinking? Well, that's the Dorian Gray effect. So, if you've read that or seen the movies or depictions, he... So, you guys know Dorian Gray? Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he... He, he uh... The, this artist does a painting of him that's so lifelike, like it's beyond lifelike. It's like captured his soul, and he um, he gives him Dorian this painting, and Dorian thinks, "Oh my God, no one must ever see this. This is just too like this is my soul." And so he hangs it in a secret part of his um his house. And as the years go on, the painting ages, but he never does, and. Dorian started out as like this purest soul, this beautiful young man that was so lovely and innocent and untouched by the world and everyone just wanted to be his friend because he's just so perfect. And his painting started out that way too. But what happens is as his painting ages and he doesn't and he gets introduced to the the weirder under underbelly sort of side of London and he starts to experience all these these um, you know these weird experiences you know sexual experiences whatever but he there's no mark of that on his face he still looks like this pure innocent young person who everyone wants to be a friend and they can't believe anything wrong of him even though he's doing these you know weird things being involved in these uh, whatever kind of situation you could possibly imagine but his painting takes on the marks you know like when people drink too much or they take drugs they keith mm. richards kind of look so his paintings there looking like keith richards and iggy Pop <laughs> and and created a new mutant baby <laughs> whereas he's he's you know just perfect but and so he's uh he st- stays young and perfect and innocent while his his contemporaries are getting old around him but he and he's becomes bored with life and wants to, you know, keep on experiencing even stranger things, you know, and weirder kind of stuff. And so exactly what you're talking about, Pip. He just yeah. keeps on <clears throat> getting worse and worse and worse until his painting looks like <laughs> totally beyond bizarre and weird. <laughs> it's a oh, interesting. Good story. I recommend it. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, Oscar That's Wilde. Cool. And that, that actually makes sense. And when you think of like men, many people, that's probably how it would happen. You need to stimulate yourself with like weirder and weirder things or something. Perhaps, yeah, yeah. May, I mean, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, or you could just stay pure and lovely like me. <laughs> you can find a, you can find a, snow eyes. Like hobbies you're you're devoted to or something like a Like I think like how imagine how good you could get at art or music or whatever mm-hmm. you're into like without that you know yeah. such limited time you know well that's a good point um uh road dull he made uh, a very interesting short story it's like it's called the problem with the fungus or something like that it's an interesting story so what happens is um this, this oh, it's the name of my autobiography as well sorry <laughs> that's yeah. about your feet but it's come on <laughs> Yeah, which, which are um, inhabited awesome. by an immortal fungus, but yeah, that's beside the point. Which, Careful what you wish for, kids. <laughs> in, yeah, in go this ahead. This particular story, um, I think, is there's a woman in in the story, and uh, she sort of thinks this was written back in the 1940s or 1950s when you know we still had a, a far bigger divide between the sexes, and so, yeah. In in this particular story, uh, this woman sort of thinks, why is it you know that men have got all these kind of things and they go on and get Nobel prizes and become millionaires or whatever and they have all the discoveries, whereas women aren't represented in these scientific fields and stuff. And so this women female character sort of thinks, well, that's because you know women sort of feel a, a biological time thing, biological clock, and they 
they have this this sort of window after you know school and then they have university but then they want to have babies or whatever and and then you know the the time for for being great in uh, and advancing yourself kind of ends because they they have want to become devoted to families or whatever and then you know people die and and there's there's no time for it so how can i solve this and what she comes up with she she isolates this uh this rare fungus that uh helps people become immortal and that's what she does and she gives it to all these uh these clever women mm-hmm. and they you know so they circumvent the problem with biology and and life so they can live forever and they can become geniuses and become creative and not have to worry about the whole biological clock thing so that was uh, an interesting kind of uh ah. yeah 1950s idea of uh and is there a is there a downside or is that the story like they sort of no there there wasn't any downside i think it was just um i'm I'm not explaining it well you know i'm not giving this a proper like story no it's cool it's a cool story but i'm just wondering if it took it forward to the usual like yeah i mean you know obviously there's there's an implicit sexism is sexism in the story in that you know women don't have to have babies they can become brilliant geniuses there there isn't some biological drive that makes women just either have babies and die or pine about it for the rest of their lives you know it would be interesting to see what the story said about that yeah like would they still feel that need or would they be like no it's it's taken away because it, you know. I think I think in the story it, they can still have children, but then they can still live, um, you know, on forever. So it it means they can take care of their biological drive or whatever, you know, that all women mm. implicitly feel according to nineteen fifties thinking, <laughs> and be geniuses and go on and study and stuff like that. So yeah, it was uh, an interesting idea. So yeah, the huh. like interesting your, your notion veins of um, having the time to become experts at, at various things. Right. I like that. What would you become an expert at? If like I feel that myself, like you know, I'm aging as as we all do, and you think, well, I can only devote myself to so many you know hours of of something and become an expert at it, and I can't become an expert at everything. Like there are libraries of books that I'd love to read. But I know I haven't got that much time. There are like libraries of DVDs, you know, movies. I'd like to see everything, read everything. I'd like to become a doctor. I'd like to become, um, you know, a physicist. I'd like to do this. But there's only so much time in your life. You can't do all that. Mm-hmm. So that's another like argument in favor of you know if yeah. your level mortality was real, you could do all that. In... Yeah, because I think we get overwhelmed. I mean, like, if you want to do these things, then, I mean, yeah, if you're not immortal, you don't have forever, but why the hell aren't you doing them now? And I think part of the reason yeah. is... Um, <laughs> That's a good point. ...is you do just become overwhelmed, you know? You have to pick and choose, and um, and that's just... It's hard. It's hard, you know? And people make it harder than it needs to be, too, and... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, hmm. I don't play video games anymore um, because yeah, it, it uses time. It spends time, which guy can yeah. be using to uh, to create, to draw, to sew, to um, to make things. Although often I'm <laughs> looking at Facebook or something like that, it wastes time just as much as a bloody game does. But <laughs> like we we all get that voice. <laughs> yeah. There's always something yeah, it's kind of, uh, that eats it up. Yeah, we all have that. Yeah, I read something recently that sort of talked about the time and the energy vacuum that all this stuff is. You know, watching movies or watching YouTube or social media, video games, blah blah blah. And even and it suggested like take a week and do none of it. No movies, no social media, no blogs, no books, no input. And just do, you know, for one week, just um, have none of that. And instead of that, focus on output, whatever you want to do, whether it's drawing or, you know, working on a little business Mm. or a little whatever. And I was like, I'm going to do that. 
I haven't done it. <laughs> it's hard to break away, baby. Next it's hard to break away. Yeah. I was going to do it this week, and I even started writing next week's news post. So I'm like, I'm going to do that, and I'll talk about it next week. And how it went. But I haven't, I haven't, I haven't managed to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's hard, man. Yeah. It's hard. Like, it sounds really good, you know, and yeah. I'm sure it'd be good for you and stuff. But it's like your brain has that, like, all right, now you need to put things into me now. You need to, like, like – Feed. You can't. I can't just make shit. You need to feed me. Yeah. I don't know, but we're not really feeding it half the time with with yeah good things. Yeah. So I mean, you do need input sometimes, but it's like we to such a we do it to such a degree, a huge degree that it takes yeah. away from it's sugar by I mean, I, for our brain. Yeah. yeah. Fill it up. Yeah. Type yeah. thing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I found I, I did get uh, a lot done in that half day. I didn't do it. Like suddenly my mind started <laughs> like literally my mind started racing and I was just think like a little bit of a panic thing, like, cause you don't have that numbing kind of distraction around you. Yeah. I was like, Oh, I got, <laughs> I got this. I've been meaning to take care of this. Did some cleaning. I did some little repair thing here and there. just like stuff that I've been leaving alone. Like suddenly I was nice. able to take care of it really fast. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> yeah, this probably is a very good idea to like try to cut back on this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was also thinking. Um, I think as we as we all do as creators, we have this time and we think, um, damn it! If I didn't have to ha- to sleep, I would create so much more stuff. Because like we think of uh, a third of our yeah. lives we use in sleep, and often mm. when you're in on a roll creating something and you feel tired or you know you have to go to bed because you got work in the morning or something like that. I think if I could, didn't have to sleep, I could work through the night and create so much extra stuff i could just go on this roll and keep on going and be productive and then i was i was thinking today actually what happens if the price of no sleep is you actually live a third less so oh so ah, interesting now we had no that because there's an old story based on that actually okay is there yeah yeah um well, it's kind of like that. It's uh, one of the stories that Herodotus talks about from Egypt. And basically, if I remember it correctly, um, there was this pharaoh and it was ordained. It's kind of like the reverse of what you said, but like it was ordained that he would only live so many years. And so he somehow would stop sleeping and party every night just to sit, kind of give the middle finger to the curse and say, well, I lived technically uh, twice as many years as that because I wasn't sleeping. Like, this is kind of a neat little story. <laughs> You'll all the time that you have, as much as you have. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that was just my thought of, because um, we, we sleep a third of our lives, but maybe s- sleep is like the... A, you know, a death sort of thing, you know, because you're totally yeah. unaware. In proper sleep, full sleep, there is no consciousness, there's no dreaming, there's nothing. You're basically dead to the world. So that's like, yeah. uh, it's it's your dead time. And, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an interesting thought. Shit, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, what what if being immortal meant you're, you're a sleeping forever like the Sleeping Beauty who was immortal for that period of time. She lived a uh, hundred years. I think she was sleeping for uh, not aging, but she was sleeping. So she, that was her uh, a poison chalice. She wasn't able to um, interact with the world. I think yeah. if, no. if you could live forever, but it had to be in sleep, that would be okay. If you could dream, that would be fantastic. If you could dream. Hmm. I would think about that. I don't know. It would be awesome. huh. I would definitely yeah. do that. Unless you're one of those kinds of people that just has dumb dreams all the time. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, oh, so like you ever have those dreams where you're perpetually getting up and going to work? Oh, that would be really yes. bad. <laughs> right. That would be the Twilight Zone version. Wow, I can dream. I can yeah. live forever. And then you, you, wake, you wake up in your dream and you're getting ready for work. Damn it. <laughs> <It never ends. laughs> doesn't uh, in, in 
San, Neil Gaiman's Sandman comic, doesn't he curse that nasty old dude with something like that to constantly be waking up from a nightmare oh, into another no. nightmare? It's this curse of like the <laughs> constantly waking up with with fear kind of thing. It affects you too, man. Oh, wow. It does. I remember years ago when I was um, I was on these voyages uh, on a saddle training ship and you work so hard, you know, day and night, you're like, the sails and riggings and stuff like that and you get up at like five in the morning or something for your shift and then you know have a three hour sleep or whatever and then get up in the middle of the night to do a watch so you're always working always doing something and when you go to sleep there's no rest because you're dreaming about that as well oh, i'm dreaming about getting up <laughs> on deck and pulling ropes and raising the sails. Yeah. so you wake up twice as exhausted because you were doing the oh, same man. thing in your dreams. That's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Happens. My God. Well, we're sort of away from immortality there, but um, <laughs> yeah. It's, immortality is great fodder for, for, for fiction, isn't it, really? Because... For sure. Yeah, you, you have to, culturally, you have to put in a downside. You have to. And you can imagine downsides as well. But I think my original thread was, what really is wrong with immortality? What really... I mean, if you take away the... um... Aging? Yeah, well, if if you take away all the downsides that you you culturally have to put in, or uh, you have to put in for the meaning of the story... So, like, what's intrinsically wrong with with immortality? Mm. That's what you're saying. Like, what in and of itself... You could is it wrong without mm. aging, without getting sick um if you got you you're used to the whole loved ones dying thing so that isn't a big deal you um <laughs> don't have to worry about overpopulation so we take, i never cared for that much anyway yeah we, we take away all the all the downsides mm. all those downsides like i think el Cid says that uh i think his argument is that you would value it less because if you if you have something a lot of something then you don't value it as much so you wouldn't value all your lives yeah. or other people's lives as much so it would be something like that yeah. yes yeah i think that's the best argument i've seen so far in the uh you know, well you... it it would be bad for that would be bad for others but not necessarily for you well cuz if you don't care then you don't yeah. care you don't care about not caring it's true you're just an arsehole for, for good point. eternity. <laughs> there goes well. that immortal arsehole. We better get out of the way. He's just a massive <laughs> dick. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> if you become immortal, you turn into a massive dick. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> like a character from The Simpsons or something. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love yeah. that idea. <laughs> we have solved the the problem. That's what's wrong with immortality. It creates <laughs> assholes. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that it intrinsically has a problem. You know what I mean? I think that the problems we put, or, you know, that you see in in comics and whatnot, are the come from the problems that we've put on it that we've been talking about already. But I think immortality. I mean, it's. I think it's in the same way that you can't say that technology itself is wrong or that like yeah. you know it, flight is wrong or something it's a thing it's a mode and what becomes wrong or right is what's done with it That's good. but it in itself it's, it's it's just a it is what it is you know for lack of a better term excellent yeah. point there yeah it's you're pre- all these these bad sides are just things we've projected onto it. Yeah. Or we've put into it. So yeah, like technology. So yeah, we can create nuclear bombs and they can just kill a lot of people and cause a lot of suffering. But technology gave us smartphones and instant communication across the planet. And, and medicine. Yeah, medicine. Lives yeah. That, that are saved and free of pain when they'd be, you know, people would be struggling and and dying and stuff like that. So, yeah, immortality is is what it is. It's just something 
well, if it is, if it could be, it would just be a, another option. And yeah, we may as well project all the good things onto it then. Like, then you could like learn all this stuff and become a genius and create, create amazing things and keeping on doing that or um, explore the world and the universe and you know go down to the Marianas Trench and have a look around and see what's down there and go to the moon and walk around there and go to Neptune <laughs> see what life is like on Venus and Mars Jupiter and I can't remember what the, the lyrics for that song <laughs> <laughs> Venus and Mars is all right tonight yeah well there you are <laughs> <laughs> or you could be like the other character from that song who's quite bad uh, the ring at the end of my nose makes me look rather pretty. <laughs> I don't know the song well enough. Oh, but, it's yeah. marvelous. Uh, <laughs> this fellow who's uh, dressed in a green metal suit, he's about to shoot up the, the whole world. Actually, I'm going to use that as the cover for this podcast. <laughs> I, I did a picture based on that years ago. In my green <laughs> metal suit. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, this has been a, an interesting quack cast. We have been philosophizing. Tance really wanted to be on. She wanted to discuss this. She was salivating at the idea. She told me, "I'm not. I'm not making that up." She told me that she wanted to. To, talk to be about fair, it. she's often salivating. Yes, that's a problem of hers. If she, it's she a droll a issue. Longer, she could solve yeah. it, but yeah. unfortunately not. So yeah, uh, she couldn't be on the quack cast today maybe um we'll, we'll talk about it again with her if she wants to lend a new perspective which i'm sure she does because she's a very clever person mm. she is. all right so this yes. has been crack 332 hopefully we live it long enough to get to crack a million <laughs> one day <laughs> We'll see how it goes. I think that's the strongest uh, argument against immortality. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right, guys. Thank you for being on the Quack Cars. Goodbye. Forever guys. yours. Bye, Bye guys. Forever yours.